That sounds very professional. Good evening, everyone. It's lovely to see you all on this special episode in the fact of it is the only month, I believe, this year where we've got five weeks. So we've got a bit of a special show. We, we've switched up the order of things. We've brought back some old videos. We've got a bit of a contrast from when we first started doing this kind of thing, or when we first started The Circle um, six months ago. And we've got some videos from then, and we've got some videos now. And we can see the difference, and it's quite entertaining watching some of it as well. So, yes. So, without further ado, we better make a start. Better make a start. So, this week's at the observation. Been reading, been reading a little bit about what's self mastery, mastering oneself. And that's kind of important, really, because I was out walking the other day. And if you think about it, all the creatures that we see outside are just doing what they do. And as far as we can tell, they don't do the I'm upset thing or somebody's upset me or some things upset me or some aspect of life has upset me. Whatever happens to them, we just take it on board, crack on and deal with it. And that's, I think, one of the most important, another of those really important things we can learn from, from looking at the countryside is that if we can actually just realize that the things that happen to us aren't actually us and we don't have to let ourselves be affected by them then it's an awful lot easier for me a lot happier for the time that we're on this planet and um, there's a fantastic example that springs to mind you remember that the uh, the government in its infinite wisdom last year was going to give us a five day window at Christmas and then COVID numbers rose and all of a sudden Christmas was cancelled. And I know a lot of people were disheartened. Don't get me wrong, I think we all were. But my first thought was, well, how do we get to the end of this Christmas break and feel better than having had the time off? What can I do that will actually mean that when I get to the end of it, I felt better? And do you know what? I've got a lot of book writing done. So, okay, I didn't have the Christmas I wanted, and, and we had all those family meetings a little while afterwards. But at the end of that break, I thought, yeah, I've actually achieved something. Didn't let the Christmas thing get to me, didn't let it get me down, and kept moving. Because it wasn't me. I wasn't, you know. Anyway, I could go on and on, but I won't, because we've got a really exciting show. And I think we're going to go right the way back to one of the very, very first Dawn Story videos we ever, ever broadcast. It was the second ever show. So it was week two um, of The Circle. Now, it's one of those, grab a hold of this video because hopefully there'll be a bit of a contrast to the one that we went out and did on Tuesday morning and I edited together yesterday. So it's a little bit different. Enjoy. Now, where's there? There it is. This is very, very old. So please don't hold us to it too much. Good morning. Simon here. I don't know if you can see that dawn behind me, but it's absolutely fabulous. It's quarter past six, Tuesday the 10th. And I've actually come out to Nine Acre Woods. Let me show you. So, Nine Acre Woods comes on the old Roman road between Dover and Canterbury. It's commonplace. Today's been especially fantastic. There's got out the car as she drove here and there's a buzzard flying overhead, which is beautiful. And then there's a tawny owl behind me. And that also is really cool. Did you know that there are two owls needed for a tawit and a tawoo? And funnily enough, the male says tawoo and the female says tawit. But even more amazing than that this morning was there was a barn owl screeching as well over towards Bet's hangar. And those are the moments that make these mornings so special. There's a buzzer calling now, I don't know if you can hear it. And typically, I haven't heard the barn owl since I actually got out of the car and got my boots on. But these are the things that make getting up at dawn as special as they are. 
So, Simon Pollard checking in at Nine Acre Woods at dawn. Thank you. You can hear that little fella. It's a wren or a wren s. It's 6.25, Monday the 9th of November. Beautiful. Oh, wow. So that's, that's where we started our uh, little history and uh, and our video sort of like samples. Um, as you can see, that was a little bit rough, a little rustic. bit ready, rustic, definitely. I mean, that was a bit rustic, but then, but we're hoping, we're hoping that, that when you see the one we've got for you now, which so we did, I went out and did Tuesday morning and edited yesterday, that just maybe there's some evidence of progression advancement should we say indeed so have a look at this one this is a well, it's a bit of a bit of a surprise morning that i had on uh, tuesday so here we go i thought i'd get up a little bit earlier this morning and come down to deal and see the sunrise and do you know what i've probably woken up to the foggiest day Seeing ages, but do you know it's one of those where you just have to say, accept the gift you are given, because I don't know. There's an eerie beauty about this. So anyway, here I am. I'm on warmer green, and it's really, really foggy. Love the piece of color of the gentle washing of the tide. Just I love the soothing nature, the sound of seagulls, memories of childhood. Just a sense of connection with this most beautiful world. I hope you can see it behind me. It's the deal warmer green paddling pool it's one of those places that i think is almost timeless you know i can remember coming here oh cyclist comes past when i was a child mum and dad brought me here my friends mum and dad brought me here and as i remember it looks exactly the same we brought ross here when he was a little one. And it was exactly the same then. It's looking like it's a little bit worse for wear now, but hopefully the 
the barriers and everything are just because we're coming or been through COVID. But it's funny how some places just never change. If I see one day they will pull this down and it kind of like will be a tragedy. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It doesn't matter if it looks a bit cheesy now because the memories that have been made in this pool for what must be hundreds of thousands of people now are, and I usually use the word timeless, awesome. So I'm underneath Deal Pier. There always used to be stories when I was a little younger of, of a tramp who lived under here. Well, I don't know if they were true, but if they are, he's moved on because he's not here now. But it's kind of, kind of got a modern, ugly, eerie beauty to it. And, uh, Oh, look. So if you're going to come out on an early morning, let's go to one or two places that the tourist trail doesn't generally take you to. So, it was a bit of a say. I thought you were thinking I was going to get up. I had this idea of filming the sunrise through the legs of the pier. And as you can see, I never actually saw the sunrise at all. It just kind of got light, which was, which was cool. But, uh, but it's, it's certainly a significant difference. I think is the best way of saying it from the first ever Dawn story we did. Uh, we've moved on a little bit. We've, we've got our heads around some technology. It is it's definitely changed. We've got a few things in the chat. We have. What have we, what have we got? The pier, the Deal Pier, is the length of the Titanic. Wow. Well, I believe Deal Pier is a quarter of a mile long from memory of working there when I was about 15, 16. Um, I remember going, having to go to Iceland all the time to go and get supplies like milk and things like that and then walking a quarter of a mile down the pier to go to the shop and then a quarter of a mile 
up the pier carrying 12 to 15 litres of milk per trip. It was it was great fun. Wasn't wasn't that we well, were working there just after or just before they did the TV programme? I was working what was there. It called? Liar. Liar. That's it. Do you remember Liar? Well, I, I wasn't there for it. It was it was filmed after my time. I know, I remember you sort of saying it doesn't look like that. It doesn't look like that. No, they used to have bright orange chairs and it didn't have bright orange chairs when they were filming there. So that was weird because we didn't know it was filmed in Deal when we first saw it. My wife sort of said, oh, I want to watch this programme and it's really good. And there's this opening shot with a drone. And I'm like, that looks an awful lot like Daddy's Deal. And sure enough, and that was really weird because sometimes when the programme, when they went on a really, really short journey, we knew it had been edited because they had a, a cottage in Kingsdown, which was kind of like just, just along the way. And then they had another property up on the marina, the other side, which was supposed to take ages to get to. And, of course, we knew that it was a very short walk. It's about five to ten minutes in a, yeah. in a car from one to the other. And then Dover and Thanet Police Force, I think it was. Well, hmm. anyway, we're getting sidetracked. Which, yeah, but that's, that's cool. We are getting sidetracked. Right. Moving swiftly onwards then, one of our favourite phrases, my favourite phrases. Well, it definitely was your favourite phrase when we started doing that first little story. It was, said it a lot. Then we, we did have a we did have a count after what I think it was the first month of episodes, and the record he got to was eight times saying moving moving swiftly on within one show. We did have some fun. It's like Mickey at me, so we had to stop. Exactly. Well, moving on from just us showing you some videos, we figured we'd bring back a PowerPoint from when we did our long distance walking section. Now, we haven't brought back the West Highland Way because we love it that much. We've probably talked to you so much about it. Do you'd like to hear about another one? So this time, we've brought back one which we've got props for. Now, let's let, I'm going to show you half of a prop. See if you can guess. Here's, here's which, half, half of a prop. See if you can guess which long distance walk we are going to do. It's, it's, Would you like it's, to model it? No. <laughs> well, maybe later. We can't have all the fun at the same time. Oh, Hadrian's Wall. Well, you would be correct. We are bringing back Hadrian's Wall this evening in our special episode of April. So, why don't we bring up the PowerPoint? Bring up the PowerPoint and let's, let's crack on. Let's not beat about the bush. We need to deliver some content. I am working on it. You are. Right. Go boom. Now, Hadrian's Wall. As you guessed, it is Hadrian's Wall. We like Hadrian's Wall. That's it was a fun. Bit of, bit, bit of keen on all things Roman, to be fair. Very true. E even if they didn't do many of our inhabitants that much. Well, they probably did do a lot of good after they wiped them all, half of them out. So, this is us at the start in the top left. Not that well, I mean, I'm obviously behind the camera, um, but this was at the start in the middle of Newcastle. Uh, we had a very entertaining train journey up to Newcastle. Our dog at the time, Blitz, he sat there and he whinged the entire way. He whined, he barked, he whinged. Anything you could think of, he was more annoying than a baby on a train. And we had to put up with it for, I think it was about seven hours, wasn't it? Something like that, yes. Most, most of the passengers were quite... Tolerant and sympathetic, but there were one or two that were getting a fraction edgy. So um, we apologise for Darth Vader in the background. He's uh, one of one of our co-hosts is deciding that uh, he he wants to have a little bit of a deep breathe. Yes. So, and the other, the next picture. So that is in the middle of Newcastle, walking down the River Tyne. Um, next picture is on the same day, I believe. Same day, yes, because yes. we walked yes. to. I can't remember the place now, but we walked to, we went to this pub called The Swan for dinner. And that was their view from the pub garden. Which is pretty cool. But the thing is that we'd been, um, we had to walk up a pretty steep hill from the time to actually get to this village. And it's the village where there's the first visible bit of real Roman wall, which we saw the next day. But initially it was baking hot we'd had i think cornettos at the bottom of the hill and we walked up and it seemed almost vertical so when we actually got to the top we were a little bit kind of exhausted so we pretty much dropped off well, that was it wasn't it when we, we turned up to the place that we booked and she wasn't expecting us so she hadn't sat on our front porch for 
probably half an hour while she was phoning around and trying to find if somebody, you know, see if somebody else could take us, especially with the dogs. Um, dog. Dog, yes, dog. Dog. Dog at the time. Um, and in the end, she managed to rehouse one of her existing tenants and gave us a room for the night. She also had the biggest shower head I have ever seen. It was bliss having a shower in this B&B. I've never ever seen a shower head quite like it. It was it was probably about four hundred centimeters by four hundred centimeters. This thing was massive. It was like standing under a waterfall. It was lovely. I'm especially I'd been walking all day. But anyway, more pictures. More pictures. Now the image on the right, that is the first visible bit of Hadrian's Wall that we got to see. The one we mentioned just now. That is day, the day after. So as you can see, the, the British weather took a lovely turn. And uh, we ended up walking the second day in the rain. It wasn't enough to really stop us. I mean, to be fair, nothing ever really was when we were out walking. We kind of we kind of just part with it. We, you kind of tend to have a bit of a time limit and a schedule, especially that one where everything was at B&Bs. Um, so... And <laughs> Sorry, we've got a bit of a distraction going on here. We've got a, a manic <laughs> dog who's trying to ruin the set. <laughs> so, um, yeah, excuse me. So, sorry, we've, we've got we've got a, a rescue coming. So, um, we sorted right. Well, Where were we before we got distracted? That was it. You, you have you have a schedule, and you pretty much have to keep up with it. It's a case of say so you make sure you've got decent light weight fully waterproof clothing that is breathable because as you can imagine if you're walking all day and you've got a pack on your back if it's not breathable you get as wet on the inside as you are on the outside and when we did this walk i was still growing very quickly so i had a cheap ish coat that wasn't very breathable when we got to the end of the walk putting that coat on you had to have a peg on your nose I'd yes. always get a breathable jacket because um, that one, I think we binned it after we actually did the walk. It was that bad. Um, and since then, I've invested in some slightly better waterproofs. Um, seeing as I haven't really gone upwards anymore, I've kind of just gone outwards. I can still fit in, still fit in it just about. But it's, it's one of those, you always have two sets of clothing because... You don't want to carry anything more than you actually need to carry, but you have a walking set of clothes and you have a dry set of clothes. So that every evening when you stop, no matter how dirty, grimy, wet you've got, when you've had a shower or you've had a chance to clean up, you've got some decent dry kit to put on. You always keep it totally wrapped up so that it's totally dry. So no matter what happens that day, you've still got that dry set of kit to, to put on of an evening, which is, possibly one of the nicest things you can actually possibly ever imagine. Don't get me wrong, the next day when you've got to climb back into that wet kit that you took off the night before because you don't want to have two sets of dirty kit, it's pretty grim, but having that dry kit in the evening is an absolute godsend. I mean, you wouldn't need to put salt and vinegar on your crisps. If you wrung out your dirty, <laughs> dirty tops by the end of the week, you just need vinegar. Yeah, they walk around by themselves. They, they do tend to walk around, especially the shorts. They, uh, they just seem to become a write-off by the end of the week or however long you're walking for. Anyway, next slide, please, sir. Now, this is possible. Well, the, the top picture is when you're seriously getting higher and the wall is more visible. The wall, you can see how... The landscape has changed and the wall has basically just been molded around this landscape. Uh, those couple of days on the top of the ridge was incredible. Windy, very windy, but incredible. I've never quite seen anything that is anywhere near that breathtaking um, the only thing that comes close is walking along some of the ridges on the South Downs Way. But um, and West Highland Way. In, the, in, in England. In England, all right, yep. Yeah. Um, Simon. But the thing with the Hadrian's Wall is the fact of how well some of that wall has been built. Yes, there's parts of it that have been reconstructed. Yes, there's parts of it that have been 
built to show us exactly what it looked like when it was built. But still, a fair chunk of that wall is original. A lot of areas of the wall are still original. And you look at it and you think, that was built how many years ago? And it's still there now. And you think, so in this day and age, you can't even get a builder to put a house up properly in most new builds. Yet there's a wall that's been there for hundreds of years. Thousands. For thousands of years. Just still standing in places. And it's, it's incredible. And you get that, that section. There's Great Chester's Fort, Halstead's Fort. Um, and they're kind of all in that, that area. And it's you just got a sense of history. It's pretty amazing. Because, yeah. But what you, you have to do, what, what we did, you have one week where you're walking. And when you're walking, because you, you're packing everything else, you haven't really got the space to actually microphone back you haven't really got the scope to actually go around and do the touristy bit so one of the beauties of, of this walk was say at the end of it you know, julian my wife came up and we had another walk another walk another week Lovely. afterwards which allowed us to do the kind of tourist trail and we went back to several of the forts that we'd, we'd walked past and actually had a look properly and i think the picture there is is Housted's which is the it one is. that's got the, the famous the famous picture of the toilets. So if you haven't seen the picture of the latrines at Halsteads, it's pretty, it's pretty much, it's on the web, it's on the website, um, on the web, on the internet, but it is, the latrines at Halsteads will take you to it. The sponges, but I hope they didn't share them. Sponge on a stick, and I just hope the sponge didn't fall off. Yeah. That would not be comfortable to, uh, to wipe yourself. Anyway, this is a family show. We must not dwell on toilets for too oh, long. Oh, and if you ever go to Housesteads, uh, they don't sell caps in the visitor centre. Uh, no. Dad forgot his hat on this walk, and we, we were looking everywhere to find him a Hadrian's Wall hat for the walk, yeah. and the Housesteads we thought would be the perfect place, and there wasn't one. In fact, there wasn't a, a cap available for sale anywhere that we went when we were walking. I mean, I did buy a Roman Centurion helmet, but that's a whole other story. So, and this, can anyone name the film The Tree on the Right is from? Anyone has, has been here for pretty much since the start of the show? Yeah. You might remember this. It was of quite a long time ago. I believe it was the third week of November. So we are going back. There we go. Robin Hood, you would be correct. It was, the one, it was the one with Kevin Costner and Morgan Freeman. And it was quite a famous scene from the film. And it was kind of cool when we walked past it because it's like, yeah, Morgan Freeman's been on this wall and now I'm walking past this bit of wall. Yeah, it, it was. It was quite cool. Definitely. In fact, one of the things we did when we came back, wasn't it, was get the DVD out and we DVDs. Do you remember those? And um, What's the DVD? Absolutely. And cool. watch the video. So, uh, Mostly, you even know what a VCR is. Yeah, I used to have two or three of those. Well, the image on the left, that is us at the end of the walk. That is the official end to Hadrian's Wall. It's not like the West Holland Way when they go, yeah, this this is the original end, but if you want to go into town centre to do the, the new end because you buy all the shops, then please go and do it. That is just the actual end of Hadrian's Wall, the walk. Jeez. And I think we had a great time doing it. Um, it is possibly second or third on my list of favourite ones. Uh, West, yeah. West Holland Way will never be topped. The, for me, the West Holland Way is, is the one, and it is because the whole our whole world for three or four years of building up to the West Holland Way was the West Holland Way, and this is we're doing this. Um, whereas these ones kind of all followed afterwards, like well, we've done this one, so let's go and do that. Um, Hadrian's Wall was the one we did afterwards. I think one of the beauties of the West Holland Way was that we got the pacing totally right. And we've never quite, maybe until the South Downs way, got that right afterwards. No. Well, there's a few things I've just seen come up in the chat. Oh. I went to Housesteads in the late 90s. Really interesting. It was summer and it was freezing. Yeah, I'd imagine. Can you imagine the poor old Romans out there? Because they didn't really do trousers. They, 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 they kind of did kilts almost, or skirts. Well, they had this kind of, kind of tunics, didn't they? Yeah, they had the... Um, um, but I think they did actually kind of like develop trousers, but it must have been pretty pretty knee-knockingly chilly in the winter, I would think. I was 17 when I walked the wall, like last century, early. Here's my Hadrian's wall jacket. Wow. Yeah. 
And there we go. It's being held up as we speak. Well, interestingly enough, the shirt that I was wearing that you saw at the end there, um, my wife refused to wash it and just binned it. She said, have you been sweating in that for seven days? I don't want to ever see it ever again. So it doesn't exist anymore. It's gone. Gone to... I think after a lot of the walks, especially that coat that I had, and possibly any T-shirt I wore underneath that coat, must have been binned, because otherwise you were having Stilton on toast if you ever wore that again. Yeah. It was <laughs> rough. So, yes, well done for, for keeping... Yeah, it. I mean, the, my, the, the, the 60s coats were... Um, 50s and 60s coats were canvas, so they absorbed everything and kept it all. Um, this this one has its own wardrobe all to itself. Oh. Yeah, I think my, my, my shirt would have needed its own wardrobe, but probably for a different <laughs> Indeed. Right. Well, I believe there's actually a, a prop that goes with this. Oh, we haven't actually shown. Yes. You, you had your dance so, cap. I had the yeah. dance cap. Now, this, this is the under hat that a centurion would have put on underneath the helmet. And can you imagine why they would need to have a kind of soft... Who, who soft thinks he layer? should model it? I think he should model it. No, I'm not modeling it. No <laughs> way. I think he should model it. Who agrees? Go I'd on. like to see him model it. Yeah. I see two thumbs up. I see three thumbs up. I think you've been told. God, you've got a back skill. You're a brilliant hairline, that has, isn't it? Fashion, fashionable bit of kit. You bet your life that's the bit that YouTube grabs to put the picture shot on the video. The tomorrow. thumbnail. Yeah. Well, you've only got to fin you've got to finish the look now, haven't you? I oh, have, yeah, but I've got to undo the bits. You need to talk for a minute. It's fine. I, I could talk for a minute. We, we both have the ability to, to blabber on for a minute. But was, when we did the when we did Hadrian's Wall, a lot of it you, is so drastic changes, or so many drastic changes. You go from this flat landscape in the middle of a city to being in a flat landscape by a river to them being in the oh, hills. Yeah. And the next thing you know, this centurion come, guy comes along and can't it's find himself a cat. Well, you, you've only got to have it on for a couple of minutes. If that, I might let you take it off. If not, I'll have to make, keep it on for the rest of the show. Yeah, no cameras, eh? Well, there we go. Yeah. We have got a centurion with us this evening. <laughs> God, dear. That's not terribly comfortable. That I mean, you really have got a fat head. That might be why. Sure. Anyway, that so, was Hadrian's wall. Anyway, we should tell him the story of this helmet, really. I mean, well, it does have a that, story. That helmet is your pride and joy, so would you like to tell the story whilst sure. you wear your helmet? Does that look better? <laughs> I suppose we better adjust the camera so everyone can actually uh, see you in, in this uh, in this properly. Mm. Oh, fire. Uh, so, there you go. Look at that. You've made it all dark. I know, it's because I'm in front of it. There you go. Right, I'm taking this off now. I feel less stupid enough as it is. Right. <laughs> Now, this, the silly thing is, is that when I kind of announced the fact that I wanted to buy this this Centurion's helmet, um, Ross kind of said, um, he said, don't be daft, you're a nutter. I said, no, no, I seriously want to, want to buy this helmet. And my, my, my lovely wife, bless her, didn't go, don't buy the helmet, you're another. She started a range working out where we could put this thing in the house. Um, we had lots of discussions as to which room it should go in. And when we worked out where it should be, she promptly organized and arranged a paint scheme, decorating scheme for that said room, which we're actually in now. Um, which basically meant, because at the time, you know, we were kind of, we were still, you know, in the early stages of our relationship. And it's one of those things where you go, this woman's got to be a keeper. So if you've got any romantic needs or accessory, I can tell you, buy a Roman helmet. It will help make things better. And it just cement the relationship. Not just a Roman helmet, a centurion's Centurion's helmet. helmet. Make sure you get the inner hat as well, because with all their metal rivets and everything else, and this is specifically designed for your head, it's actually pretty uncomfortable. He does so, have a big head anyway, so anyway. It doesn't do the Romans much justice if they had to squeeze in those every day. Well, they probably they probably tailor made them a little bit for for the people that were wearing them. Or his office. <laughs> your your, uh, your 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 wife has just come back and said, "Lol, 
As long as you never wear it, is what I said. Well, I got bullied. I think you did. I did. Should, should we move along a little bit yeah, before so. you get even more yeah. bullied? Let's, um... So, well, whilst we're on this kind of special episode and we're bringing back videos from the past and memories from our trips away and the difference between our videos um, from now to when we started this, I wanted to bring back a video we did on one of our guided walks around Whitehorse Wood. The only reason, well, the, the sole reason I wanted to bring this back is because we went over Jade's Crossing. Now, I won't say too much before we play the video because I think Jade's Crossing marks such a significant place and significant reasons as to why, when you're out walking, you avoid main roads to the best of your ability. One, for road noise, but two, for safety. And we'll play the video now, and I'll talk to you a little bit more afterwards. Cool. Now I've got to read which one it is. There we go. As the sign says, take the road to the right of the pub. Here we're using the bridge that goes over the A249. This bridge is called Jade's Crossing because a young girl called Jade and her grandma died there in 2000 crossing the road. The bridge was built after a 20 year campaign after four people had died. But you can see from the video here how loud the traffic is and how fast the traffic is moving. Now, whilst we were using Jay's Crossing, we actually saw two people crossing the road that got beeped at by cars because this bridge has been specifically put in there to stop people crossing the road. But clearly some people still don't quite understand that after four people dying. As you leave Detling Village, you'll see a North Downs Way sign directing you up the hill. Don't go up the hill. If you look straight on, there's actually a path at the bottom of the hill parallel with the road. Take that. Once you've entered the woodland, you'll come to this fork. You will take the lower left path. Avoid taking the right path. Once you've reached the end of the woodland area, you want to take the footpath up the hill through the larches. top of the hill go left now what you can see here these are bluebell bulbs now we're a little bit early because we're here in start of march but if you come here in april you'll start to see this whole area just become a sea of bluebells they all start to come out and they cover any woodland they bring so much color locally we have a very large woodland which is filled with plants, bluebells, but the whole sea, it just erupts in colour and it is truly brilliant to see. So if you're ever anywhere near some woodland in April time, get out and see some bluebells. And the path divides, go right the steps.
so incidentally one of the things we'll have in next week's show is we're going to be looking at bluebells and we're going to be looking at why our bluebells are better and more special than anyone else's bluebells so keep a tune in for that because but that was when i was talking at the beginning Everything seems to be really, really late this year. It's probably because we had the, the snow in February and we've had so much rain. Uh, but the bluebells are normally already out and doing their thing by now. But fingers crossed, we'll go out and we're gonna, gonna go and find some bluebells next week and we'll give you some history because the history of bluebells is actually a large part of the history of this country. So yeah, bluebells. Well, talking of bluebells, there's one thing that's come back in the chat saying, I have a few bluebells starting to flower in my garden. We do too, to an extent. We've got yeah. bluebells everywhere, but we have one of our little co-hosts uh, who decides that it's one of his favourite smelling spots. So he's walked all over one part of our bluebells. Yes, the front of our house, this is starting to go blue. Well, not the house, but the garden. If the house is going blue, I'm worried. Yeah, especially red bit. There's also another... Say, well, another, another comment in here. I took part in the Jade Crossing campaign. KCC was supportive, but the DOTR civil servants wanted to have their statistical norms justified. Ross has put his finger on the key point. We all live in a real world. I couldn't agree more. I'm, I'm all about and I'm all for getting people outside. I love the countryside. The countryside has helped me through thick and thin. And I want more people to go outside. But I want more people to go outside safely. More people go outside and enjoy nature. And if you've got a crossroads, you've got a crossroads. But Jade's Crossing is a perfect example of what we can do to get people across those roads without having deaths, without having serious injuries, without having car crashes, anything like that. When we were there, we were literally crossing the bridge and there were two people walking across the junction and there were cars going along 60, 70 miles an hour, and they just walked across ha ha holding hands to the middle, went to the other side, got beeped at, and wondered why they're getting beeped at. They walked another couple of metres up the road. There is a crossing specifically built to go across the road. And it, it grinds my gears a little bit because I want to get more people outside, and I want to get more people engaging, involved, appreciating what is on our doorsteps but there are some people it just doesn't click and at least now jade crossing i think for me is a perfect example and almost a memorial the fact of we need those crossings we need bridges we need footpaths we need the uh subways everything to avoid people going on the road but then to in acknowledge the fact of people have died crossing this road and it really really does bug me so i wanted to play the video just because simple as that simple as that at the end of the day grinds my gears fab expression love your passion well thank you very much um yeah absolutely well let's lighten the mood a little bit we have got uh, a video that has been in the works since we started doing all this. And it was mentioned a long time ago as when should we use it? And now seemed like the perfect opportunity. So what we've done is like you do at the end of some films, you'll get some bloopers while the credits roll out. Well, we've actually got some bloopers of our own. They're all PC. There's yes. nothing that isn't PC in this. It is, it's all... Well, yeah, it's we, all child friendly as well. We, we've edited out the bad words, but enjoy it. It might put a, well. It should put a smile on your face. There's not, there's not a bleep in these bloopers. Let's put it that way. There's a bloop in the bleepers. Yes. Well, so, here we go. Here's, here's some bloopers for you. Uh, if I can find the video, do, 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 do. well, it is open somewhere. There it is. That's the one. Here we've got Elva. It's got this kind of typically broken, gnarled, kind of mossy trunk. Almost unrecognised cat up. So, Hazel, 
easy to identify this year, this year. So we just come along, start again. Now this part of the walk, you come onto the Wardershire Park Estate. Now behind me, you can see is the Manor House. Now the Manor House was bought by the first Earl of Guildford in the 18th century. And the Earl of Guildford still owns it today. Different person now though. Now, the house itself actually burnt down in the 1913, in the 1913, <laughs> in the 18th century, and it's now been owned, it's now cut. So we've really, 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 once you come up the hill, stop. What's now, this here, you can see on my right, this is one of the old shooting embankments. And what they used to do is they would put three to four things that I can't think of the name of right now. <laughs> and this time, I'm currently stood on top of the old drainage piles. Piles, drainage piles, really? And this you can just see here is the edge of the tarmac. Now for all of the hover up. Hello, so this week we've got a rather interesting little experiment. You see, I received... Hi, I'm Simon. And I'm Ross. And together we present the Simple Life Circle. Now we can help you unlock the secrets of the outdoor world understand the way our countryside works, identify our common animals, birds and plants, use the countryside to help you feel refreshed and recharged, to find an inner peace. <laughs> I just recall what I to say, I was like, <laughs> There were many more, um, but they were the, the best ones. Um, uh, the, the, the only polite ones. They were the only polite ones without either one of us using some naughty words. Cut the cut the things come back. Brilliant, laughing. We in well, we, we we do try and do everything in one take, but there are times when it doesn't go in one take. Actually, it's funny. Do you remember at the beginning of the dawn story that we did for this week? And I'm talking over a couple of videos. Well. The original video that I actually shot it with, I actually had to separate the sound from the pictures because right in the middle of it, Scrappy did a poo. And I'm kind of like, can't really broadcast pictures of Scrappy doing a poo. So um, I kind of did a little bit of edit video jiggery pokery. And I thought, well, I've done that one. So I actually did a bit with the swimming pool as well. But yeah, he, and he had, I can tell you because he's quite unique and well no he's not is he really he does he's he's into the walking version well what we didn't but, include uh, was the video of dad doing a poo and walking down the road like scruff normally would as well well we hope you enjoyed that that, that I hope that's lightened the mood a little bit there there's there's a very there's an abundance of entertaining ones uh but we can't use them during the show uh, <laughs> So maybe one day we'll, we'll we'll put them all together and we'll we'll find someone we can put them and put bleeps over the top um, at a later date. Now we need to talk a little bit about the show itself, what's coming up, what we've changed this month, what could possibly change in the future, but that's all pretty much down to you. Now we've changed the shows this this month to 8 p.m. starts and we're going to run that until the end of the month and we'd like to know how you guys feel it's running do you prefer the 7 p.m. starts do you prefer the 8 p.m. starts that's totally up to you we also asked way back in the start of the year if you'd like fortnightly shows that were two hours long or the weekly one hour shows uh, back then everyone decided they wanted the, the weekly shows uh, but we thought we'd ask again. Especially with summer, <clears throat> summer coming and longer light evenings. And Boris letting us all out again. Going to go cause havoc in the town. So 
we, we thought we'd ask again. Especially considering that we will be probably probably in fortnight, we're going to be actually actually telling you about some dates with some real outdoor events that we're going to be running. Um, we've got a meeting to finalise some bits and pieces on Monday with the History Project. Um, we're looking at one or two different other collaborations. And as I said, I think it was Ju June, July. That we got the two dates was specifically for Circle members. Um, so we're looking at getting those out. So in the light of all these things that are happening, we just thought we'd ask you whether you like the format we've got now or whether you've got an idea that changes it. And if there's a large majority of people saying we'd like this, then we'll see whether or not we can accom accommodate that. Well, I've got some good news for you. We have? Well, we've, we've got a definitive answer on what time we're starting. Right. Everyone wants 8 p.m. Well, that's cool. We'll stick with that then. 8 p.m. works for us. So that's cool. We'll stick with that. And yes, someone has just mentioned, looking forward to the Raven Master. Of course, we do have Chris Scaife coming along next week. Um, if you don't know who Chris Scaife is, and or you, if you've never heard of the Raven Master, you must have been living under a rock for a little while. So why don't you come along next week and educate yourself and learn who the Raven Master is and talk a little, well, give some questions that we can ask to Chris when he comes on the Indeed. show next week. I mean, having read his book... He's got a book which is um, called The Raven Master. Uh, we know that he's got some entertaining stories to tell. He's got some funny stories to tell. Um, and obviously the ravens are quite an entertaining species of bird. They're really intelligent. And they seem to have the main mission of being a raven at the Tower of London is to wind up the raven master if at all possible. So we're really looking forward to that. Now, one of the things we, we had a, a marketing meeting earlier and it's been great the way that people have been sharing the posts about Chris. But we're going to, if we have permission from our members, uh, we'd like to start tagging some of you into those uh, posts. Not the ones in the actual closed group, but the post, the Facebook page, which is where we do our advertising and our marketing, because we need to increase the engagement of people. So if we tell you, not everybody, every post all the time, but if you get tagged, if you could put a comment in, maybe share it so that we can try and spread the word because Facebook really, really responds to not only quant content and the amount that's put out, but they really, really do like to see those posts that are engaged with. Because when they're engaged, they say, oh, these must be important. They must be good posts. And it'll help us spread the word and just get the message out there. So that would be really, really helpful. And if you're okay with that, then let us know in the chat or on the Facebook group later in the week. Um, and we know that there's one, one of our members who's recently joined. If you could accept the friend request, then we can get you invited into that group because there's, there's been some good engagement this week and some entertaining posts and bits and pieces put up. So that would be really cool. Um, we also need to remind you all, um, which we haven't really done in a little while, about the accredited, accredited membership ability that you have as a member, where if you bring, say, for example, you're paying the full membership, you're paying £20 a month, and you bring four people along to the show, and two of those people sign up, will take £5 per person, and they sign up as a member, off your membership cost a month. All the while that they're a member. All the while that they are a member. So if you are paying for the full membership, the £20 a month membership, and you bring four people along and they all become members, you're paying nothing a month whilst they are yeah. still members. Get to come for free. And who doesn't like freebies? We do like free things. Everyone likes a freebie. So that would be really, really cool. So anyway, next week is the Raven Master. Um, and they say, prep yourself some questions. Chris will be, be starting, well, yeah, we'll, we'll chat to Chris about halfway through, around about half eight ish be prepared that if if it runs over we're not going to shut the whole thing down at nine o'clock so you know it might be a case of getting your hot toddy ready and um you know, having your dressing gown just in case you need it because if we hot water bottle yeah we might run over a little bit next week and if if we do get some form of heat wave get your suntan lotion your sun bed ready it's gonna be a long show indeed and as i say there'll also be we're going to combine the dawn story with uh, plant animal of the week and we're going to have quite a major feature on bluebells as well 
and there'll be our regular bits and pieces and we're hoping we'll have one or two other people come along and join us which would be really really cool well what we've also done during this show because we haven't done in a little while and we figure we'll take it back again like we did at the start and bring it forward like we did with the Don story we've got a challenge for you all this week yes quite a challenging challenge we think well it's, it's a subconsciously challenge subconsciously challenging, challenging challenge. challenge yes um and what we'd like you to do is put how you got on with it into the members facebook group because we think well, we'd like to know how you got on with it so anyway what it is you know, tell, shall i tell them well it involves one of these one of these little devices we'd like you to try just turning it off for an hour. A whole hour. Just completely off, leaving it alone, whether you want to go sit in your garden, whether that be you want to go and do some gardening, whether that be you just want to sit down and read a book, or, or you're at work, or you're out walking the dogs, just turn it off for an hour a day, an or hour a day. Could be when you prep your dinner and actually turn it off, you know, so when you make your dinner, have your dinner, do the washing up, just try turning it off. Because we think that would be, and we're, we're going to do it as well. All right. We're going to, not when you're asleep. That's, that's cheating. cheating. But uh, <laughs> we thought it'd be an interesting challenge. So if we can put some stories in there through the week, that'd be brilliant. And uh, if there's any uh, interesting comments, then obviously we'll anonymously feature them next week. So that'd be good. Okay. Are we all, are we all up for that? We, we reckon we can, we can get into that one. That would be dead cool. So, well, we, we, we've got a slight change to the end of the show tonight. Now, I think this video has possibly been the most requested video by our members. It's certainly my favourite. For tonight. I think there's been, well, it's been a complete overhaul and everyone wanted to see this video. So we figured rather than have another observation at the end, we Just would actually once. play this out as kind of our end credit video for this week. So we'll play the video. It's been a pleasure. It's been great fun. We've enjoyed ourselves this evening. We hope you have too. It's been a little different, hasn't it? And this is the snow video. We love it. So thank there you, you very much, everyone, for coming. And we really hope you enjoy this video because it seems to be ours and the fans' favourite. Indeed. We look forward to seeing you next week with Chris.